Hey guys, welcome to game three between Do Life and Exit. This is BSL Season 12 Chobo League. Round of eight, and Exit is currently up two games. This is the best of five portion at this stage of things. Exit is going to be starting at the... Let's check what the colors were otherwise. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and keep the colors swapped. At the nine o'clock location, we have Do Life as the red Terran upper right-hand corner. We have Exit as the blue Terran. This is on Tau Cross, and Tau Cross is potentially one of those maps that maybe... Oh, no. Exit's going to go for some cheese. I did want to mention I got Exit in chat for this one. I do cast these live Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, 9.30 to 10 a.m.-ish is typically when I start, depending on what else is going on. He has informed me he just hit 2100 on ladder, which is quite the feat and the accomplishment. That is A rank, I think close to S rank. And this is where I'm never at that level. I'm not anywhere... I haven't played ladder in forever, to be honest, so... Up in that level, the numbers get fuzzy for me. I think one time I was talking to Jay and I'm like, yeah, I think Artosis hovers between 2200 and 2400 and actually he just hovers around uh, S in and out of S rank. He's, I would say he's pushed himself into the S rank category, but he's more down to the A and he can be between the 2100 to 2300 at max range. I'd have to ask him what his max is, but usually around 2000, 2100. But mid, mid rank A is what Exit lets me know. Anyway. Another cheese. This time we've got a barracks in the bottom left-hand corner. We are seeing a barracks in the corner for Do Life. Now the question is, is does Do Life scout this supply depot towards the main? So this isn't going to be BBS, but it is going to be a proxied, a proxy barracks at the very least. Most likely going to see Marines. No gas being grabbed. Wow, well, take that back. Gas being grabbed. So it's not just going to be a pure Marine build here. And I'm wondering if this is almost going to be like moving zealots into your Terran opponent's main, where it's you get those marines in early to try to do some harassment along those lines. Or if this is just actually, you know, the other idea behind this as well is if Do Life snuck out and got an earlier scout. Or even if exit, there's a lot of options with this, I got to say. I kind of like the positioning of it because you could plop marines down to the bottom left, just completely confuse them as to where your base is. Otherwise, exit could be conveying as soon as Dulife goes up and scouts the space depending on timing. You could see that there's a lack of a barracks and he might be thinking, oh, this is a 14 command center and let me go ahead and create reactions based around that. But anyway, we'll, we'll see how this develops. In the meantime, that Marine is going to be able to sneak around and get towards the main. Dulife is making his way this direction. So as far as the conveying 14 CC information and a lack thereof, that is not happening. It is going to be a Marine and an SCV making his way towards the main. Dulife is going to see the factory building. He's able to sneak in very, very rapidly here. And there is no defense. Just a single Marine making his way out. Keep in mind, if this SCV can line back of that Marine, can do a lot of damage, trying to work on that SCV that's trying to build the factory. Some SCVs being pulled. This is economic damage that Dude Life is suffering. The SCVs are on top of the Marines there. It looks like this Marine is suffering to the counter SCV. A second Marine will be out shortly, and that should stop this counterattack. But... This is a lot of lost mining time, and that does delay the factory. And being the current meta is to push towards factory a little bit earlier. This is going to slow Dew Life down. Just the economic damage alone uh, can be significant. It looks like he's going to go ahead and try to do a little bit of harassment of his own. Attack that SCV building, the a depot. But this is going to allow a... Well, I was going to say, it could allow a much earlier Vulture potentially. But it looks like Exit, feeling like he did sufficient economic damage, is actually swapping to a machine shop perhaps to go uh, expand and... <laughs> Dropping a supply depot that he can cancel after the fact. This is some nice harassment, I gotta say. Very nice harassment. So this is... You know what's hilarious? This is, this is usually the... So I, I was assuming this is what it was going to be ahead of time. Also, he's going to be able to get a lot of scouting information out of this barracks at the forward position. But typically, this is something you see more PVT, right? The zealots at the forward position moving in zealots to disrupt the Terran opponent. Here, he's actually drastically delayed any attempt at a, a command center expand. Create a lot of blockade otherwise he managed to get his tech up it looks like he's going to have a siege tank out shortly siege tanks are so strong on tau cross there is a command center being built there's some marines and a vulture in defensive position but it looks like you know what despite all of that it looks like exit's command center is going to be slight uh, just about even the big difference here is the siege tank and that could play a a big factor moving down the line. I'm almost wondering if Dulife. I'm not. I don't know if Dulife is one of those older school players where he's played a lot on Tau Cross or not. I'm wondering if he knows the power of the siege tank on this map. If he opts to go for more vulture-heavy openings, you might end up paying for it. Second siege tank 
being built, this vulture being pulled back after finding that front very well secured. And despite all that early harassment, actually, the SCV count a little bit in Dulife's favor. So nice job on Dulife to actually maintain. So despite losing a bit of mining time, he is a little bit behind on tech, but not insurmountably. Uh, despite everything, the Gambit looks like it actually ended up paying out more in Dulife's favor a little bit, aside from the early tank count being a little bit more in Exit's favor, which could be significant. Barracks is also here, wondering if there's... wonder if these Marines are going to cycle back, go ahead and round with that. that he'll have to, to pull that out to the... Sorry, there. You, know, you want to pull that out. I actually like this from Dulife. He realizes this is probably the fastest exit route. So he's already put this barracks hovering up here so that he can get some damage done and perhaps slow down some future factories that are being built. A starport is already up for exit. He's going to drop a control tower as well. So potentially going to go for drops. Tau Cross has just a lot of open room that usually in the Protoss, uh, you know, you get the siege drops, things like, or the uh, siege drops. You get Arbiter recalls back there. We would have an armory up, by the way. Uh, Starport and a control tower opposite side as well. So both players kind of on the same page. Mach Machine Shop is whirling and it is getting that siege check in the background. And here, yeah, a Goliath there trying to join the party. Looks like it is going to be able to back that off. And so that's going to be trapped probably in that upper left-hand corner for the rest of the match. Maybe, it could, I don't think it'll be a factor for the rest, uh, rest of this match. Exit. The critical thing for Exit right here is he does have those four siege tanks compared just to the two on the opposite side. And again, Tau Cross having all those bridges, that could be critical down the line as it starts moving into the mid-game where you're starting to take a third. We do see a drop ship up. Here's the other critical thing. Is keep in mind, Tau Cross has this droppable area up here. It looks like do Life was already on top of it. Keep in mind, he's behind in the overall tank count. If there, This could come down to micro versus micro. Maybe he was thinking of doing the same thing. But because he was just a sliver late, is this going to be just be drop versus drop? Interesting. I'm wondering if Do Life is going to pull this back to try to defend this, or if he's just going to let it go and go for a drop of his own. I, I assume at this stage, he's just going to go for a drop of his own. Two siege tanks to the north. They're going to go ahead and drop on that high ground. Tanks on the opposite corner doing the exact same thing. So both players, pseudo mirror builds, those tanks sieging up with the spot. A wraith being produced to follow from exit to take care of these siege tanks, but... They'll at least provide some spotting for these siege tanks on the low ground. One tank taking initial hit. Wow. And so actually, exit with a nice defense here. Might even get the dropship on top of it. Still no defense opposite side from Do Life. So Do Life losing a wow, losing an immense amount comparatively in this exchange. So he lost his assimilator, several SCVs. He's behind in the SCV count overall. And now there's a wraith to support as well. Just in case there were additional drops that were going to try to counter this. Plus, so. Now do like to try to defend this. He's going to be going against that high ground misfire advantage. He does have enough Goliaths and siege tanks to support where it looks like he's going to be able to clean this up. With the comp sat and spotting. Is he going to get that last shot? Does get the last shot. But do life well behind now in the mid game. Only has three siege tanks uh, to his name, set two factories up. Additional factories plopping down for exit. Exit's in a much better position, and actually he's going to continue with the drops, building two more drop ships on top of what he already has. Plus, critically, Do Life is just now grabbing a second gas. And that initial drop ship was able to get back home. So we might see an even larger attack force here up on this ridge. And what it looks like Exit is going to just go ahead and drop what he can immediately. The barracks in this mid-ground looks like it might be able to spot it. Second dropship is up. It looks like it wants to go ahead and scoop up some reinforcements. And a lot of vultures being produced in the interim. So it's a potential one-two punch here of getting those siege tanks up on the high ground and potentially having some vultures sneak by into the natural expansion while those tanks are distracted. Do life able to at least get oof, some nice initial shots Killing that first siege tank before it even lands. And the second siege tank able to do a little bit of damage, but not much else. Exit actually kind of donating two siege tanks with that drop. And the vultures now moving out on the field, dropping, I like this, dropping some mines with the... So, have a lot of dropships up in the air, but dropping some mines just in case there was a counterattack underneath. The vultures starting to move forward a little bit. 
And Dulife is moving out with two Goliaths and two Siege Tanks. He'll have to slow move through that minefield. I do believe with that slow movement, though, unless there's Vultures there to kind of do some interrupt on that fire, they will be able to get things done otherwise, or they're not going to be able to get a lot done otherwise. Dulife going to go ahead and grab his quick third expansion. Exit not positioning to take his expansion just yet. He does have all sorts of factories pumping all sorts of Vultures. I'm still waiting for those dropships to fill up. He's got them out there, but he hasn't really utilized them that at this stage. These vultures are still slow. Speed is upgrading. Cloak upgrading as well. So we're going to see Cloak Wraith Vulture with some dropship play in the mid-game from Exit. He needs to do some economic damage, though, because he's once again behind in the overall SCV count. And Dulife has established his third base. Exit just now trying to grab his third. But he's basically built units to take a more aggressive posture. When you do that, you need to be able to utilize it and and be aggressive with it. Siege tank sieging, some vultures engaging to the south. Overextending a little bit, so a little tit for tat. The one thing that Exit is doing is even though Ash Dulife has that third base, he's starting to box him in to the, this three base position. And keep in mind, this is Tau Cross because of those bridges, because if you can get position on those siege tanks, you can end up basically cutting off your opponent and sticking him to just his side of the map. But in order to really utilize that, you yeah, you need siege tanks. And he's grabbing more machine shops to do so. It looks like Dulife, realizing that first of all, he has closer reinforcement point, has a larger army, starting to press into that to make sure that doesn't happen. And clearing out units along the way. Third base still not up for exit. So exit might be in trouble here in the mid game because this base is up. It's starting to mine. It's not saturated yet, but it will be shortly. I believe he has the superior factory count by a large margin. Yeah, he's sitting at six factories versus just the four and a fifth coming online now. However, this is a very, very late third comparative to do life. Vultures moving up just as the SEVs are making their way into position. Unfortunately, they're attacking the sea tanks and not the SEVs. Able to get in position to maybe drop a mine. They might be able to get a sea tank kill. Looks like not. Reinforcements coming up and clearing that out. A Wraith is kind of still... Keep in mind there's this Wraith still hovering here. It might have Cloak in the follow-up. I missed a drop, which I think only got a Vulture out. Killing some SEVs. Probably, the, I'm going to assume that dropship died on top of those turrets. Reinforcements coming across... For exit. So exit now utilizing those dropships. And I take it back. No. So the dropship was here. It managed to escape. Got, looks like, at least three vultures inside this base. Maybe the fourth one killed. So that's going to force Do Life to go ahead and try to clear that out. He he cleaned that up pretty well. And honestly, not a lot of infrastructural damage. Wasn't even able to take out a turret, unfortunately. But this is exit's base just now coming online. This base has been up for a very long period of time. But there are, the X Factor might be these Wraith. Wraith are being produced. And a secondary X factor is just the three machine shop factories versus it looks like just the two on the opposite side. If Exit can start establishing a little bit of map control in that direction. Use the Wraith to kind of spot overhead. Unfortunately, as far as just raw ground army that is currently out there, well, actually it looks about even. <clears throat> Supply count is in do life's favor. But I think the, the critical piece here is, is the number of siege tanks. So if Exit can hold on, get this, this 3 o'clock base up. It looks like he does have it up in mining. I think the, the difference in supply count is more than it seems right here. And just from what we're spotting. Because keep in mind, Exit also has these Wraith being built. He also has a handful of dropships that Do Life doesn't have comparatively. Level 1 weapons online, both by the way, for both players. It looks like Do Life making his way to, towards level 2. And Exit, once again, yeah, cycling around. He's going to go ahead... And get some mines planted in that back corner. A Wraith moving forward to go ahead and spot. It's going to cloak. And it looks like it's going to provide a bit of scouting information. At least be able to see that armory. Some vultures trying to sneak by. Mostly just getting scouting information and donating their lives. Do life in a strong position here. He's got 20 supply up on exit. But the mobility factor a little bit in exit's favor with these Wraith potentially. I do worry about exit's ability to establish map control after this. Because Do Life has a big bank. Ooh, is he gonna hit these mines? Okay, there we go. Doing some nice mine clearing there. 
This is the nice thing about having the tanks on Siege and those Goliaths. They just really clear that out rapidly. But you can see starting to box things up. Now the question is, does he sit here or does he just proceed forward? It looks like he's going to barrel forward. Some Vulture is going to be able to spot that army ahead. Siege tanks sieging earlier for exit, but I believe in inferior numbers and also not with a concentrated group. These tanks being left unseaged by Dewlife. The Wraith coming down to provide some support. There's not enough Goliath to take care of all of those Wraith. And it looks like, as a result, Exit's going to be able to clear this army up. And cloaking immediately, there's some additional comsat, but there's only one Goliath left. And it is not going to survive for a very long period of time. These Siege Tanks in retreat. So Exit smashing that army in the follow-up. He does have that third base established. I believe he still has the superior factory count. Let's go ahead and take a look in the background. Actually, it looks like it's 6, 7 here in the background. Versus, what is this? Just six, comparatively. But again, three machine shops versus just the two, comparatively. Which is going to... And again, I feel like the siege tanks make such a big difference here. So essentially what this is come down, comes down to is Dewlife is going to rely more heavily on the Goliaths here in the mid game. To kind of swat down these Wraith. And these Wraith are going to provide, in my opinion, superior spotting. Particularly over these bridge lines. Against these siege tanks. Vultures moving forward. Exit getting aggressive. Diving into this one o'clock base. Siege tanks... Engaging on the bridge. This is a difficult place to try to penetrate for exit. Ends up, yeah, eating a lot of splash fire. But the Wraith still trying to pick away at what they can. There's four Goliaths there to go ahead and engage them. The Wraith coming back, trying to defend and keep those mines from going off. Unable to do so. One mine blows up two tanks. And it looks like this last tank is going to be able to clean up. Be cleaned up momentarily. So exit just holding this position with just a single siege tank. So it looks like Dewlife does defend. And Exit grabbing his fourth base in the bottom right-hand corner. So it looks like he is going to be able to go ahead and get that fourth base ahead of Dewlife. Still behind about 20 supply. Upgrades are going to be just about even for both players. So Exit sitting here with Wraith Siege Tank versus the Goliath Siege Tank composition. Again, I feel like the Wraith might be the difference here for Exit. Exit still poking forward, eating some additional damage, but getting position to the north, which is going to force Dewlife to come to him. The Wraith... Peeking forward in case these tanks decide to unsiege and resiege. SCV's trying to pull off the line. So Dewlife making a bit of a mistake and not really closing the gap on the bridge. And that is going to allow Exit to deny this third base. Some vultures sneaking through for Dewlife in the meantime, though. They're going to try to sneak up into Dewlife's third. It looks like they might be able to get some damage done. Some reinforcements coming down from Exit to try to defend that. So Vulture's trying to stream across and get to those siege tanks in the interim. Not able to do so. And on top of that, Exit's going to grab another base. Behind all of this. So he's, gra he's grabbed two additional bases. This bottom right hand corner. To say that kind of the third that's typically there. Is being camped by that vulture. And Dewlife pressing forward into the siege tanks to the north. To go ahead and clear that out. And this is again where yeah siege tanks. Can be all the difference. The Wraith going to poke away at this command center. So that it couldn't even lift off if it wanted to. Third base down for Dewlife. And now exit all of a sudden has a stranglehold. In this match. He is not only going up. He's not only at three bases, although technically one base. My, the main is just about mined out for both players. But essentially, he's got three bases up and a fourth on the way. Versus just the one mining base for Dewlife. That's going to put Dewlife all in momentarily. Plus, Exit has managed to sneak well ahead in the supply count. Nice macro in the background. And with that sweep, with that one... I'm not going to say that was the only mistake. But with that big mistake, letting those siege tanks seek to the north, Exit may have just more or less put a vice grip on this win, which will buy him a berth into the round of four. Dewlife, in the meantime, trying to plant some turrets, wants to get a sneaky expansion potentially here at the 9 o'clock. Vultures are already there. They, I believe they spot it. Some vultures trying to defend and sneak their way around. And you can just, yeah, I like what Exit's doing, sweeping around from the south. If he gets some siege tanks towards the natural expansion, he will. If he just plays defensively here, he will be able to win this match. I believe this command center, yeah, was built interior to the base and then lifted off, but it is not even going to be able to land. Dewlife was just hoping that exit wasn't going to find it. Reinforcements sweeping down from Dewlife just try, uh, to try to clear this out is end up going to is going to end up losing a lot of his SCVs here. Some Goliaths and the, he might be able to clear this attack force out. But even if he does, I don't know that he's going to have the SCVs to saturate this base once it's up. Yeah, able to at least just push straight through the rest of those siege tanks. 
This is kind of a precarious situation for Exit. He's got this base bottom left with all these siege tanks nearby. Trying to establish right there, uh, a position right there, but in the meantime, Exit essentially sitting on four bases. Although this one's just mining gas, not quite established otherwise. It looks like Wraith were able to clear out that Vulture in the bottom right as well. Dewlife might be able to sneak right back into this because he's starting to press here to the bottom left-hand corner. Might be able to take this base out. Reinforcements are on the way from exit. Unfortunately for Dewlife, while he's hammering this, he's a bit out of position to, one, prevent his natural expansion from getting obtained, and two, to defend potentially this, this 9 o'clock base. So one base down for exit, but sweeping up, he's near... 200 supply, 40 supply up, and just barreling into that natural expansion. Do life in a bit of trouble. He's got to defend this, otherwise he's going to end up getting contained. Go ahead and sweep back so we get a better view of it. Exit not quite having the spread he wanted as far as an engagement point, so it looks like he's basically kind of created his own straight line as far as the siege tanks to engage against, and it does not look like he's going to get the pure seal on that natural expansion. Loses a lot of his attack force as well. So there's still a marauding attack force here at bottom left for Dewlife, going ahead and denying additional bases. More reinforcements out in Vultures and in other units. I should also point out that about 70, this is maybe a little too many SCVs, we got 71 SCVs here for exit. So the supply difference, about 20 of that supply difference is in SCVs, so in workers, not in just pure army. Science facilities up. We do see battle cruisers starting to wander out on the field now for exit. He's able he's able to buy himself time and get that tech switch, and we don't see any anti-air comparatively to deal with this for do life. Sweeping up, checking if that third base, well, I guess this is technically the fourth base at this stage, is up, is gonna find siege tanks there, undefended. And I gotta assume that's gonna be GG from Do Life. Do Life is starting to attack this, but honestly, he just does not have when you get caught like this, when you don't you don't catch that tech switch if you don't have the anti-air. That's just a lot of time that you're losing. And a lot of units you end up losing. So exit, able to just walk in. Siege tanks underneath, battle cruisers overhead. Near 200 supply. Do life trying to sneak by through with some vultures. He wants to go ahead and try to do some extra damage to this bottom left hand corner. There are vultures to go ahead and counter that as far as heads up versus heads up attack. And exit honestly can just walk in, go ahead and contain do life to his natural expansion. Clear a couple units. Actually, SCV's already flooding out from Dewlife. Wants to get them all out now. So per, so he can potentially go ahead and get... He's going to, yeah, just try to take another expansion here. He's playing refugee style at this stage. With seeing these BCs out. I don't know how he's going to mount a defense, though. To deal with these battle cruisers, Because a lot of his infrastructure is still here. Battlecruiser still camping around that 1 o'clock base. Some vultures gathering up here to the bottom left. It looks like Dulac just making sure this bottom right-hand corner wasn't taken. But just as the vultures are moving out for exit, it looks like the vultures are going to start wandering in. There is a single siege tank there, but that's not going to be sufficient to defend all of this. Battlecruiser's moving out to the natural expansion to go ahead and do some damage there. But this is critical. Dulac might be able to find himself some life here. Sweeping out these vultures. Some more reinforcements coming down for exit to try to defend and keep everything alive. It looks like he is going to be able to clear this out. Does It takes a little bit of economic damage, which actually might be a favor here. Clearing out some of that SCV supply. Two command centers now up and working for do life. Two command, the natural expansion is mined out. So exit's essentially at two bases, but he's going to go ahead and try to establish this third in the bottom left. But critically... Exit has this huge battlecruiser armor army. And he's starting to push into the natural expansion to cut off reinfor the reinforcement point. Goliath, this is a lot of Goliaths, walking their way across. It looks like there's still enough of a gap where reinforcements can walk across and make it onto the map. So it's not GG just yet. Exit definitely has a huge lead, though. Clearly has a huge lead. Plus, Yamato Cannon has just finished, which is going to make the Siege Tank very, very vulnerable. I love it when I say something and something immediately happens like that. Just makes me feel great. SCV is moving to the bottom right-hand corner. 
Siege Tank's going to be there to defend. So right now, Exit just has superior positioning, a superior economy, superior upgrades, superior tech, I would argue. Goliath's just moving instead of A moving through those mines. It looks like a handful of them got cut, uh, blown up. Do Life essentially needs to attack, defend, do everything at once, and I just do not believe he has the capacity to do so. Plus, Exit is growing a huge bank. Gigantic bank. More reinforcements moving across for Exit. He's got the battle cruisers and Siege Shanks. They're probably just going to do some spotting across here. Yeah, Siege here, and then attack over the wall. Clear out some of that infrastructure. And more reinforcements going to cut off any sort of opportunity for Do Life to go ahead and take out anything in this bottom right-hand base. Sea Shanks being taken out by Mines, and Do Life realizing he just doesn't have enough, doesn't have the economy, doesn't have positioning, gives the GG right there, and Exit is going to advance to the round of four. Congratulations to Exit. Well played by Do Life up to this stage. Honestly, he looked fantastic uh, through the front portions, but a little bit of creative play from Exit, and honestly, some good positional play taking him out in this round. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.